Electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video update, an energy update for the month of February 2022. And what a great month it's been. December was awful, wasn't it? The worst uh, month of solar generation we've ever had, from what I can remember. Um, January was excellent, one of the record Januaries that we've actually had. And February, well, February looked for a while like it wasn't even going to beat January. So solar generation-wise, it didn't look that great. But as it turns out, we've had a great month. The stats are really good. But more importantly, there have been some good observations. And you know me, I like observing the data. I like checking the data out. So there's quite a few changes here. One of them was the EDI, the, uh, my energy device that looks at the amount of spare solar we have and then diverts that to the immersion heater on the hot water. So we heat our hot water using solar power. We've started not boosting it on cheap rate energy from Octopus Go. We've started not boosting it at between three and six in the morning and instead relying just on solar energy. In February, there's been enough energy to just use solar to heat our hot water. So it's that sort of change that's really good. And that's the reason why I like doing these videos, because it really does bring to mind the difference that you experience month by month throughout the year. Owning solar and looking at your energy does change month on month, and it really is seasonal, and you become more attuned to it, and you recognise the differences. You can really tell that it doesn't feel like winter anymore. It feels like spring. It's slightly warmer, there's less heating, you can see less energy use for your heating appliances. And uh, as I said, the hot water is now heating from solar only, only. It's making a lot more sense. Grid use is down, which I'll get to all the numbers in just a moment. But you can really tell that spring is here and things are really starting to pick up. So what's different? What's changed in the month? There's still so much going on. I'm afraid my battery still isn't ready to release to you. It's here. It's configured. It's almost working. But if it's not COVID slowing things down, then it's uh, Modbus meters that are failing and needing a new part and then waiting on parts. And now the poor guy that's installing my system, he hasn't had a holiday for God knows how long. So he's taken a holiday. So I've been waiting for that as well. So Jordan, come back soon. Hurry up and finish my installation and then I can share it with everyone. So if you're looking at solar and you're thinking get your system now, then uh, unfortunately most installers are really busy, especially the good ones. I do hear some horror stories of people going with the first quote they get, the one that responds fast, and it's often the lowest quote. Well, sometimes that works for you, sometimes it doesn't. I really do recommend going with someone that you can trust and know that if there's issues, they'll come back and fix them. And that's why I continue to recommend Power Different because they do look after the customers however long it takes and whatever obstacles are in the way. And they're just constantly expanding and taking on new people, but uh, they are fully booked up all the way until October already. So yeah, if you're looking at putting solar in, be patient and plan ahead is what I would recommend. So what else has happened in the month of February? Well, one of the things that's happened is this video is powered by EcoFlow. I've got here an EcoFlow Delta Mini that I've mentioned online on Twitter. And uh, basically it's powering this video because I've been recharging all of my devices on it. Um, I use the, let's see if I can show you. There's some uh, three pin plugs on here as well. Uh, and there's loads of sockets down here for USBs on the front as well, which I think you can just about see. So I've been charging everything from this device. And even while we had a storm, because it was Storm Eunice and Dudley, wasn't it, um, during February, this arrived the day before the storm here, and we did have a power cut. So I actually had a UPS battery to provide some power. And uh, I'll do a separate video covering this EcoFlow device and uh, why I've got it, because um, it's, it's a Pretty big story on its own, I think, as to why you might want a portable battery as well as a home storage battery. So I do want to cover that separately. But uh, other things that have been happening in the month, my solar panels still aren't 100% finished. Uh, they're on, they're connected. Uh, we've been testing them. Um, today, they were <laughs> tinkered with. So Power Different came back today and have taken the panels off the wall and uh, rewired uh, them at the back. 
So we're putting them into the second configuration into a different inverter. That's what's coming next. So I've got to wait for the electrician to come and reinstall the different inverter. That's the next thing that's going on. So at one moment, I've got some extra power from extra panels. Today, I haven't got any extra power. So it's all changes. I do make it complicated, don't I? Doing all these different tests and doing all these different configurations. It's not quite as easy as you might think. Hopefully, when you decide to go with an installer and you just pick a configuration and go with it, it's a lot smoother than what I actually experienced because I do all these extra things. Anyway, so I'm still waiting for the solar panels to be 100% finished. I'm still waiting for my home storage battery to be fully connected and working. I haven't had a home storage battery for the entire month of February. So it's very interesting to look at the stats and look at the price that I've been paying for electricity and see the difference. And as I've said before, it sort of doesn't make sense financially to have a home storage battery because when I look at February and the price and the cost difference that uh, I've experienced without a home storage battery, it's not huge. It's not that big at all. In which case, is it really worth having one? And the answer is yes, because I felt lost without it. It feels really odd. Um, using electrical devices and looking at how much solar there is and then working out shall I or shall I turn this on right now whereas normally you just get on with it and you just do whatever you want because the battery covers the excess load if you turn multiple devices on so the battery smooths the way and makes you more flexible and uh, using just your own battery and solar power rather than the grid um, I'm only using a few extra kilowatt hours uh, of grid but it'd be nice not to use any It'd be nice to get back to only using a tenth or two or less. So a home storage battery this month, when you see the stats, it'll sort of make sense that um, you could almost say it doesn't make financial sense, but it just makes good common sense having one. It completes the system and it, it does save money because if you're putting um, four or five kilowatt hours of cheap energy into your battery and you're using it, then that's four to five kilowatt hours saving from premium rate. And with electric rates going up and up and up, batteries do make sense. So they, they make financial sense. But yeah, if you're looking at payback and all those sort of things, it will take a lot longer to pay back having a home storage battery than it will with solar power. Solar power um, payback periods because of the energy price increases, I mean, they must be getting ridiculous, almost to the level where they'll pay back within two to three years. My payback used to be between four and a half years and six and a half depending whether I looked at my first array or both arrays together. Um, now, with the price of electricity going up to 40 pence or more, it is the, the period of payback is just coming down and down. So, yeah, although there's a queue, although there's a delay and a waiting list for people to get solar installed, it's definitely worth doing. If you've got space on your roof and you've got space in your garden, then it's an ideal thing to do because not only will it save you money, it protects you, protects you from increases in the future. So all of this energy crisis that's going on right now, I feel pretty <laughs> sort of smug, pretty um, nonplussed about it because it's as if it's going on and happening to someone else. Uh, I'm quite remote and distant from it. So these energy increases um, aren't really impacting me because I've got so much energy that's my own. And uh, the extra energy that I bring in, I'm getting cheap rate from Octopus Energy on the go tariff. So uh, even if my prices double, it's not going to cripple me. I really do feel for those people that are spending thousands of pounds and their bills might be doubling. It's time to think about solar. Right, so there you go. So solar panels not finished, battery not finished. <laughs> EcoFlow battery here, which will update you later. My electric car, um, I'm picking it up tomorrow. One of the reasons why I'm getting this video done uh, as quick as I can. Um, so I'll look forward to sharing, uh, hopefully on the journey on the way to collect it. Um, I'll explain why I've chosen it and what it is, etc. And then after that, hopefully I can share lots of images and uh, lots of information about the car. So I really look forward to that too. While I'm filming this, um, there is a video uploading, which is the winter summary of my uh, heating test. So basically, I feel that winter's over. So I've done a video summarising what it's been like not using our oil boiler. So we've basically not used the oil boiler at all and used electrical devices to heat our home, not as an actual system, but to test it, to work out what the difference is and how it feels and what works and what doesn't work and how many kilowatt hours does it take to heat a home with electricity. And it has been really, really successful with some interesting observations. So um, there's another video which is uploading now. So take a look at that uh, too. 
And that covers the sort of thing like how much money does it cost to heat your home with electricity versus oil? So I've got that comparison in for the entire winter period, which is November, December, January, February, because it was pretty warm in September and October. I didn't use the heating at all. So that review video is up there as well. So today, stats, that's what it's about. And just before I do the stat, the one thing that's changed is home assistant. I think I've mentioned before that I've started to explore and use home assistant, which is a like Raspberry Pi um, computer device that runs an open source operating system called Home Assistant. And it's a repository. It's where you can put all sorts of data all together and represent it in one place. So my CASA smart plugs, the data for those are going into Home Assistant, the My Energy device, um, all of that data about how much uh, energy we're using and the kilowatt hours for hot water and charging the car, that's all going into Home Assistant. My import and export, my solar edge PV generation, everything is going into this Home Assistant and it's quite flexible and open. You can have temperature gauges, humidity gauges, even my car previously, the uh, Mini that I had, that could connect and you can see data from the car in Home Assistant as well. So I've been looking at that system to see whether I can use that more for these type of monthly updates and for updating myself and keeping an eye on what's going on all in one place. Previously, it just wasn't inclusive enough and it wasn't right and I wasn't getting any benefit from it. So I kept going back to the old original apps and looking at solar edge for one thing my energy for something else and then going to the casa app to manage which devices were turned on and which weren't but i've now got it so that the system has all of the data in one place and even the casa smart plugs can be configured and turned on and off from home assistant so there's no more swapping between different apps so yeah i'm now in a position where i think i can show you some different looking charts and I think they look better than some of the charts I've had before. And the functionality is starting to get there. So Home Assistant is something that I'm not sure if I recommend it for everyone because uh, it's it's quite involved um, for a techie IT person that I used to be. I sometimes find it difficult myself. It's a little bit challenging to find information. You've more got to be a GitHub expert and um, a Linux person to um, find your way around these systems. But uh, if you've got the inclination and you've got the time, I think it's worth it because there is a lot there that's not in some of these other apps. So you might be able to fill in some of the gaps by using Home Assistant. Anyway, I hope you like the charts and the data that's about to come. So uh, without further ado, here's the stats for the month of February. OK, these are the main statistics. 430.1 kilowatt hours generated from solar PV. We used in the house a total of 672.8 kilowatt hours. That includes the Eddy and Zappi. And we exported 49 kilowatt hours and imported 291 kilowatt hours from the grid. This is what the individual days look like day by day. And as you can see, there's quite a few days there with 15 kilowatt hours or more, especially the last four days of the month. And you can also see the scale goes up to 40 kilowatt hours, whereas in January it only goes up to 25. The peak days in January were nowhere near as big, despite having good generation in January too. So those charts are produced from my energy data, but the data is going into Home Assistant as an app. So by comparison, this is the chart from the My Energy app. The breakdown of that solar generation is 251 kilowatt hours. That was from the Solus Inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, and 205 kilowatt hours from our solar edge inverters with those extra panels. Now I'm estimating in there is roughly about 55 kilowatt hours from the extra panels, but I should see more than that going forward. Comparing to previous Februarys, you can see that the Solus Inverter generated more than other years apart from 2019, but the Solar Edge Inverter, that generated more because of those extra panels. This is a useful chart showing solar generation in yellow. The blue there is what we're importing from the grid, and purple at the bottom, that's what we're exporting. Comparing to last month, it's really easy to see that we imported a lot more. The blue areas are much larger, with less export as well. 
We're still importing a lot more from the grid than we have historically, but obviously that's because we're heating the house with electricity. But as you can see this month, there's a nice big drop in uh, import from the grid. And considering we haven't got a home storage battery this month, I was really quite pleased with only exporting 49 kilowatt hours to the grid. We used most of the energy that we generated. So where did all that solar energy go and all that energy that we imported from the grid? What did we use it on? This graph pretty much shows where it all went and it breaks down the heating devices that we're using with CASA smart plugs but also shows the EDI as well and would show the Zappi but of course we don't have an electric car, not until tomorrow so we haven't got any Zappi charging in February. A couple of things to note on this graph, the lime green line, that's showing the eddy import from the grid, so how much we're heating our hot water from grid energy. You can see in the first week of the month it was starting to increase, we were importing from the grid, boosting with the eddy, and then the last three weeks of the month we were only using solar energy, so that lime green line is plateauing and staying flat. The pink line at the top that's the solar energy with the eddy device. You can see that was used a lot, lot more. And then secondly, you can also see in the last few days of the month, everything seems to go up more acutely. We're basically, we were heating the house more than we needed. Everything was on full blast using all of the solar energy. And we had loads, over 30 kilowatt hours each day. Looking at the actual numbers for these things, the spare plug that I moved from place to place for different devices, that was 16 kilowatt hours. The dehumidifier was 30.9 kilowatt hours. From the grid, the eddy used 33 kilowatt hours. Charlotte's radiator was 35 kilowatt hours. The hall radiator, that's the small one, that was 55 kilowatt hours. The larger radiator, the 900 watt or the 1 kilowatt radiator, that was 88 kilowatt hours. And the lounge radiator, that's the biggest one, 107 kilowatt hours. And finally, the eddy with solar energy, 112 kilowatt hours. So how much did we pay for that imported energy? Well, in January, it was £41.37 for 437 kilowatt hours. In February, £33.76 for only 279 kilowatt hours. So despite the My Energy data showing 290 something, the actual amount from Octopus Energy was only 279 kilowatt hours that we used. And lastly, a chart from My Energy. So in total, we used 146 kilowatt hours to heat hot water using the Eddy device. No charging of the electric car, as I said, and 531 kilowatt hours went to the house. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, it really does help. We've crossed nine and a half thousand subscribers now on the way to 10,000. And uh, I saw the other day, James and Kate on Kate Phantom on Twitter, they were saying that they've just crossed 25,000 subscribers. When I first met James in 2019, he had 10,000 subscribers. I, I cannot believe my channel is at the same level James and Kate were at in 2019. Uh, I wouldn't want to say I'm that far behind them, etc. I'm not catching them up and all those sort of things. But it just goes to show that the information we talk about here, it really is relevant. People really are interested in it. And this little channel of <laughs> me, a complete amateur, doing these amateur things, making mistakes all the time, like my microphone not working, it still works. And people want to be involved and want to hear what's going on. And the information we share both in the comments and in the video is useful to people so i'm really pleased and thankful that you watch these videos so uh, until the next video until the next update thank you so much see you again soon bye for now